is a hatch year um, chirp hawk. We've been getting a nice assortment for you today, those of you that are around earlier and saw the second year and the after second year bird. Um, we know this is this year's bird because of these beautiful yellow eyes. As they get older, those will change to an orange and then to a red, um, and so that changes quite a lot. They'll also get a lot darker colored on the back. Right now, this one's pretty well, good description is pretty much brown all over. <laughs> brown streaks down the front. Um, those will later on get more rusty colored and rather than being like vertical teardrops the way they are right now, they'll turn into more horizontal uh, markings. This is three months old. Then. What type yep, of hawk is yep, it's exactly. This is a sharp shinned hawk. Flexibility, their wings are, in the scheme of things for birds of prey, comparatively short and round. Um, in comparison to some of the bigger birds. Um, they also have this nice long tail. I'll come around the other way so you can see the back too. Where did you get him to? Um, this one came from the banding station and what oh. happens at the banding station is we have lures that look like injured birds and these birds as they're migrating along need to eat and maintain their energy and so something that looks like a free meal it's like sign me up <laughs> I'm coming in they come cruising in for uh, a landing to check it out and run into a little bit of net um, take a look at these legs these are really good for grabbing excellent uh, flexibility once again for grabbing stuff these guys have been known to grab things right out of the nests or right out of trees um, because those long legs are just outstanding for fly-by grabbing <laughs> um, would he have been caught banded he could have been caught banded this one wasn't that was just um, a little bit ago today mm -hmm. yep they were caught today um, and banded and the band is on here like a bracelet gets a social security number sort of sort of you know it's the only bird in the world that'll have that number and the uh, bird banding laboratory can keep close track of what's going on if anyone else ever catches this bird they'll take down the number send it in and they'll be able to send information both to the person who banded the bird originally and say okay your bird took off it was later caught and Georgia by a, a nature center, la 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 la, and we've got information there. Cruising around there, these guys are just outstanding hunters. Um, they migrate only as far as they need to, um, as far as heading south. Um, if your food is only going a little ways south, that's all the further you need to go. As long as there's songbirds, these birds are around and so quite frequently anymore um, we as humans have started this nice habit of having bird feeders and the bird feeders are great places for songbirds they're also great places for these guys to come in and raid <laughs> bird feeder in the true sense of the word <laughs> more than one level of bird <laughs> feeder <laughs> Feel that wing. Okay, it's kind of stiff and slippery and smooth. And red-tailed hawks hunt during the day, right? So they um, and they hunt by finding their prey and then pouncing on it. So it doesn't really matter if they make a fair amount of noise. Okay, but a great horned owl hunts at night, and if their wings make all that noise, they can't hear their prey. So it's more about being silent so they can hear their prey more than being silent so their prey doesn't hear them. Feel that. It's a totally different feel. So it's muffled. It's got, it's like this. I mean, it's got all that texture on it. So the red tail hunts by sight and the owl hunts by sound. Yes. And there again, you can see that, that oh, sure. the leading edge of that wing. Look at the red tail's wing. It's just slick and it's crisp. It slices through the air. Mm -hmm. The 
But did you get to feel the red tail's wing? It's real smooth and slippery. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you want to feel these? That's a red-tailed hawk. And this is a great horned owl. If they're older than three years old, we can't tell. We just know that they're at least in their third year. We also know because they have stripes. Okay. We have stripes going down their breast instead of bars. By the second year, they will have, will have molted out all these feathers. And when they come back in, it'll be barred, and it'll be more of a cinnamon color. And the back of them, instead of the brownish color, the back will be more of a, a gray, a grayish slate color. So they change as they grow. Uh, Sharpshin hawks are the smallest member of the occipiter family. The occipiters are woodland hawks. They eat small birds. They eat some of the birds that they might be catching over there, the chickadees. Um, this one, they could eat up to a blue jay size. They have very long tails and short, relatively short wings. And that's so that they can easily, with great uh, maneuverability, fly through the forested areas that they live and hunt in. If they had really long wings, it would be a lot harder for them to make their way through the trees and such. The tail, the long tail helps serve as a rudder. Uh, just like on an airplane, it helps them steer. Um, these guys, because they do eat small songbirds, sometimes you'll see them around bird feeders. A few years back, I was living down outside of Milwaukee, and I was sitting at my dining room table, paying bills, I think, and the sparrow came crashing into the, the sliding glass door. And it, not hard, I mean, it didn't hurt itself. And then it flew up and it tried to get in again. It was like it was trying to get in the house. And I thought, what is wrong with this bird? <laughs> and then it went and hid behind a potted plant that I had next to the sliding glass door. And the next thing I saw was, we weren't sure if it was a sharpshin, which would be one of these, or the next size up, a cooper's hawk, came swooping right past the sliding glass door. It's like, that bird made it another day. <laughs> um, and a lot, you know, many, that's, that's what's lunch and dinner. But that's, they're very good flyers. Um, uh, let's see, they're, they have an ability to lock on with their eyes to their prey. See, he's locked on to me right now. <laughs> and when they do that, they don't, they cannot move their eyes in their sockets. We can go up and down sideways, back and forth. They can't, they're just in their socket. And so what they do instead is they move their body. They lock on to their prey, and then they move their body to, to maneuver their way through as they're hunting. <laughs> and you're going to hold it. No, keep your left hand down. Because sometimes they see that left hand and they think, ooh, that might be some food. Okay, you got it? That's good. That's good. And Eric, coming. it's going to take your picture. Now, take a moment with that. You can see it must have caught something recently because it's going to So you're going to hold it up like it's the Statue of Liberty, and we're going to count to three. And when we get to three, when you get to three, we're going to go pop. You're going to just pop it out in the air, okay? And you guys, we help us count. And I'm going to get out of the picture right here. Okay, are we ready? One, two, three. Christmas card shops here. You <laughs> that know what it is? It doesn't look like Santa Claus. <laughs> and for you to send out to all your... Uh, two, three. Oh, yes. one, what we're going to do for this one is... Yes. <laughs> and then when we count to three, he'll try and get a flight shot. Okay. And on three, you are just a little bit. Uh, okay? All right, are we ready? One, two, three. three. Yeah. Very nice. Right. <laughs> the feathers here, it's probably the time of the molt for him.
Let's see. Everyone's gone away, but I have some pictures here that I can show you to explain the process. Stay right here. This bird is the only bird that will have that number. And if it's ever recaptured, then that information will go to the database in Washington, D.C., where we send all our banding information and we'll learn more about that bird if it's recaptured, where it is, how long it has survived so far, all that kind of thing. Um, to put the band on, I'm going to take a cool pair of pliers called banding pliers, appropriately enough, and I'm going to use this little um, uh, pin right there to open the band up, and then I'm going to put the band in, a, in one of the holes, like you can see here, and that way it's impossible to put the band on too tight. Here we have another one. <laughs> so we'll do the process simultaneously. I've got band 22510439. So what we're going to do then in order to tell the age of these these two white-throated sparrows is we look at three different things. Um, one thing that we're going to look at is if I show you guys the bird's wing right here. You can see that, of course, the longer feathers are called their flight feathers, so that's obviously what they fly with. And above those, we have what's called um, coverts. I'll come a little bit closer here. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the difference between these outer ones here and the inner ones to tell um, coloration, shape, pattern, things like that. Because every year, a bird will lose um, its feathers and replace them with new ones. Um, so for example, you can tell on this bird right here, its inner coverts have this kind of dark, beautiful chestnut color at the end. It's almost a yellowish or whitish color. And the outside here, they're pretty much drab brown. They have a little bit of a brownish edge. But because of that, we can tell that these feathers here are the adult feathers that are coming in. So at some point, probably next year when this bird starts molting again, these feathers, these coverts here, will look just like that. So based on that one indication, we can tell that this bird was born this summer. So we call that a hatchier bird. A couple other things about white-throated sparrows is one thing, kind of like some of the raptors, is you can look at their eye color. This one has a really, well, what color would you say that is, sir? Yep, I'd say it's pretty brown color, yep. And when they're adults, they'll have very distinct reddish brown color.